You know, I took some improv classes back in 1992, and I always got, often got the same note from my from my instructor, which was great concept, bad execution. And that is my note on my first attempt at doing this video, which is the seven rules for boomers doing edibles. So uh, I, f I found that, you know, I, I wrote this whole thing and I read it. And you know what? Reading isn't blathering. Talking off the top of your head is blathering. And as a blathering boomer, I'm supposed to blather. So here goes. So basically the seven rules for boomers doing edibles had its genesis about 15 years ago. I was in San Francisco. I lived in Berkeley for the entire decade of the 80s. So I have a lot of friends in the Bay Area. Um, and I was back there for New Year's Eve. It was uh, whatever incarnation of the dead, post-Grateful Dead, pre-Dead and Company was playing that night. I had a New Year's ticket and I had a medical marijuana card and I went to the dispensary and bought a whole bunch of Butter Brothers granola bars which were really delicious and really powerful, as I was soon to find out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anyway, so I get on the bar with a couple of friends, and I remembered that it took about an hour for edibles to hit me. So we were about we were going under, you know, in the in the bar train. By the way, Bart is for those of you who still call San Francisco Frisco, Bart is Bay Area Rapid Transit. Anyway. We're on the bar train going under San Francisco Bay, and I realize we're maybe 15, 20 minutes from the venue. I ate one of the granola bars, figuring it would hit me like right around when the show started. Well, that was a bit of a miscalculation because it hit me right when I was arriving at the San Francisco Civic Center Auditorium. Getting into the place was not easy. Luckily, my friends had the tickets, and they kind of pulled me inside, and... Really, all I was capable of doing was, hey, look, I got a reflection in that eye and none in that eye. I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, I had cataract surgery, so they removed the lens from my glasses. Anyway, I digress. I'm prone to do that kind of thing. Um, got inside. All I was capable of doing was finding a seat, which was not easy. Sitting down, which was easier. And then once I sat down, I found myself gripping the armrests to make sure my fat little butt stayed attached to that seat. Well, I had stuffed my pockets with granola bars because I thought I'd run into a bunch of friends at the show, which inevitably, inevitably would happen at a dead show. But getting out of the seat was not an option. So the band starts playing, everything's nice. Um, but then I got kind of hungry. And getting out of the seat in and of itself was not an option. So going to the vending area was seriously not an option. So my common sense took a backseat to my desires, as has happened so many times in so many circumstances over the years. I pulled out another delicious Butter Brothers granola bar, unwrapped it, which was not easy, and devoured it, which was really easy. Anyway, the second granola bar hits me, and I'm really off in the in the wahoo ya 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 land, and the dead are playing, and I'm on this carousel of insanity, and Grateful Dead music is coming from the calliope, when it occurs to me now I am really hungry, and at that point all reason are going out the window, so I gobbled up another granola bar. And you can only imagine what the rest of the night was like. Anyway, um, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty seasoned cannabis user, but uh, that night was very much out of control. And again, I never got out of the seat until I realized, because it was kind of getting less and less crowded, the show was over. Oh, okay. And uh, the friends I came with gracefully came back, scooped me up, and brought me to the BART station. So that part wasn't too tough. Finding the tr right train, I decided I had an opinion on which train we should be taking back to Berkeley. I was wrong. They were right. Luckily, I listened that time. We get on the train. And boy, let me tell you something. That train ride took forever. 
I mean, we started going under the bay, the realization that I was on a train that was literally going faster than Space Mountain. It's true. Look it up. Under a major body of water. It was terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. And then I looked around and I was absolutely positive. Every single eye was on me. So in the course of one New Year's Eve, I had managed to break rule number one and rule number two. Rule number one, if it isn't already obvious, if you're going to be doing edibles, make sure you have something to eat available to you other than more edibles. Every rule, all the other six rules follow from rule number one. Rule number two is the only other one that got broken that night, which is if you find you have violated rule number one, stay off of public transportation. So now we get to rule number three, and rule number three is actually a very serious rule. Rule number three is if you find you have violated rule number one, do not drive. Now I know some of you think you're a badass. But let me tell you, if you drive in that condition, you are equally likely to end up a dead badass as you are getting your badass back to your desired destination. So do not violate rule number three. So, okay, you violated rule number one and you're aware of rule number three. You're not going to drive. But you realize you left your favorite Elvis 8-track tape in your car. Well, yeah, you, by the way, all the rest of these rules, only rule number one and rule number two are specific to the San Francisco Civic Center. The story I told there, they could happen anywhere. But the rest of these rules, you break rule number one, the comfort of your home, at a friend's house, at a club, whatever. Anyway, you realize you left your favorite Elvis 8-track tape in the car. And you're 63 Chevy. And you just got to have some Elvis. I get it. I really, really get it. Sometimes you got to have some Elvis. Well, rule number four. I mean, rule number three we talked about. Rule number four. If you find you have violated rule number one, now it's okay to go to your car to, to retrieve an item of importance. But just remember this. Just because... A car is the same color as yours does not mean it's your car. <sighs> and yes, I've actually violated rule number four. I could still remember the screams. Okay, Boomer, it's time for rule number five. And rule number five is the telephone is not your friend. If your landline phone rings, do not answer it. If that flip phone in your pocket vibrates, enjoy how that vibration feels on your leg. Mm -hmm. But let it go with that. Believe me, you do not want to have that conversation no matter who's calling. And for heaven's sakes, don't dial it. You don't want to deal with the day after aftermath of that conversation. Now, I know some of you boomers won't be able to avoid violating rule number five. I get it. I get it. Sometimes the temptation is too much. And the consequences for said violation varies with the specifics of the violation. But there was one no-no that is such a no-no, it gets its very own rule. Rule number six. Your ex <clears throat> is your ex for a reason. Now, it's very possible that having violated rule number one and you're thinking a little differently, maybe outside the box, and it occurs to you in this very, very altered state of mind that perhaps the breakup was actually your fault. And you might be right. Who knows? This is not the time to apologize. Not the time to apologize. Find something else to do. Go get your Smith Corona typewriter and... Type out your apology to read tomorrow, or if typing's too much, which it might very well might be, find that old cassette recorder of yours and blather your, uh, your, your maudlin regrets into the microphone. But don't call. 
don't make that call. Do not make that call. If you, if you can't stand it, you, you don't know what to do with yourself, go to the pantry and peel off the labels of every single item in the pantry. And then when you have all these scraps of paper, make them into a pretty collage, anything. But don't call your ex. <sighs> I hope you're with me so far. So now you've broken rule number one. Your mind is thinking very differently than it normally thinks. And something occurs to you that never occurred to you before. And you realize this is profound, a profound revelation. And you just, you're onto something. Maybe you just invented some form of cruise control or, or, you know, who knows what, but you just have to share this. Oh my God, this is just so important. And then you realize your children helped you face, uh, helped you, uh, set up this account on this thing called Facebook that you real use every so often. You don't really have to know how to use it. Well, let me tell you something. Rule number seven. If you have violated rule number one, do not post on Facebook, no matter how profound the revelation you think you just had happens to be. Trust me on that one. Anyway, that goes triple for making YouTube videos. Peace out.